Chapter 4 The Field Exam Squall had fought monsters countless times. He had trained with seeds and cadets nearly every day of his life since he had first picked up a weapon. And fighting with Cypher was never training so much as it was a struggle to survive the moment. Seed training gave a great deal of emphasis on teamwork and being prepared for anything a battle might throw at you. It was a program intentionally designed to numb them to fighting against humans and monsters alike. Despite all his years of exhaustive training though, Squall still felt a sliver of apprehension as the water speeder rushed through the waves. He was back in the passenger hold, standing at the ready with Cypher and Zell. The latter of whom appeared eager and nervous. The former looked disturbingly hungry. Squall was trying to ignore that look on his face, brought into sharp relief by the low light. The speeder gave a great lurch and they heard the distinct crunch and screech of rock and metal shattering. Squall got his footing back as they bobbed almost erratically in the water. Then the shift of sand and the cabin steadied as the speeder drove right up on the beach. Quistus was already at the entrance, pressing a button to open the outer bay doors. Cypher was out first, Squall and Zell just a step behind him. Quistus and Sue stepped out. The latter jumped down onto the sand and saluted Quistus before running off. She wasn't going to join the battle. She was one of the deciding factors in who did or did not pass the seat exam. She had to observe everything. Quistus would not be accompanying them either. She threw out her arm, indicating to the far steps as she yelled over the noise of battle, You three are to secure the central square. Don't forget to equip your GF properly before you head into battle. Let's move out, Cypher called excitedly. Zell fell in line behind Squall rather than Cypher. Cypher ran ahead, disregarding his team. Squall chased after his commanding officer, his face set in a neutral expression. The metal and stone staircase leading down to the beach had already been secured by Squad A. Squad B, Cypher furiously leading the charge up, took the stairs two at a time to reach the top. There were already G Army soldiers there trying to hold off this new and unexpected wave of attack from an enemy they did not know was coming. Dalit reinforcements! Squall heard one ask as he lifted his standard issue G Army saber. A rather boring, weak weapon when compared to his revolver. Let's do this! Zell laughed, charging forward. It was a rather small group of soldiers. Squad A had already done most of the damage. Each of them had a man all to themselves. Squall stepped up to his and noted the patch on his blue uniform marking him as captain of this particular group. Though his eyes were covered, Squall could see his snarl. You just picked the wrong fight, he laughed. Cypher was already playing with his own target, dancing around him and making sure that his hits never landed hard enough to bring to rapidly panicking soldier down. To Squall's other side, Zell was ducking and trading blows using only his fists. There were metal plates in his gloves that allowed him to deflect sword blows, but he seemed to be moving rather slow to Squall's eye. Not his problem for a moment. Squall caught the captain's sword against his own and the man snarled. You're just a kid. He snapped, angry at seeing Squall's youthful face up close. Squall couldn't help it. It was kind of funny. He grinned and was rewarded with a growl of rage from his opponent. He twisted his blade, knocking the captains to the side. Before he could recover, Squall kicked out and planted his boot square against his chest. The man fell back, grunting in surprise and pain at the strength of the blow. No. The soldier fighting Cypher was backing away rapidly on his hands and bottom. He was shaking, bleeding, his weapon had been knocked away. 
I had seed. What? The captain's eyes went big as Squall stepped in closer. Seed. Squall didn't respond to him. He pulled back his blade and took out the captain with a single swipe. The first human life he had ever taken. Seed training was already in full effect. He felt nothing but the adrenaline pumping quickly through his veins. He turned to look at Zell even as Cypher was running away from his victim, looking for his next taste of real battle. Zell ducked and dodged under the slashes of his opponent. The soldier was getting tired while it seemed that Zell was only getting faster. A long swing down. Zell ducked under the soldier. When he came up again, it was with the man's body. He brought it back down to the ground and Squall heard a crack as his helmet hit upon the cobblestone ground. He didn't move again as Zell came back up. Nothing to it. Zell gave him a thumbs up. Is that a burn mark? Squall asked, frowning at his sleeve. Oh, yeah, Zell laughed. G Army Regulation Fire Spell. I put it out though. You know, you don't really believe that dropping and rolling will actually work until it does. Why haven't you cast a cure spell on it? Yeah, that kind of reminds me. Can you do me a team solid and cast one on me? You don't have any. Squall frowned. Cure spells were basic equipment. It's not that I don't have any, Zell scratched his head. It's that I don't have. He trailed off, mumbling something that Squall couldn't hear over the gunfire. Don't have what? I don't have a GF, all right. Zell looked away, shamed. Squall blinked. That's not possible. You needed to obtain one as your prerequisite. Yeah, and I did. But it's a defensive GF. It doesn't even accept magic junctioning. It's too low level. I turned it into the garden faculty for repurposing to trainees because it was so useless. Squall frowned at him for only a moment as Squad A ran up the stairs. It would be their job to hold this place now that Squad B had cleared it of enemies. You gonna make fun of me? Zell asked, glaring at him slightly. In response, Squall reached into the pants pocket of his uniform. He pulled out Ifrit's Odin capsule and tossed it over to Zell. He caught it neatly and frowned at it. What's this? His name is Ifrit. He's the GF I obtained for my prerequisite at the Fire Cavern. What? Zell's eyes went big as he held the tiny, marble-sized capsule in two hands now as though he were afraid to drop it. This is the GF from the Fire Cavern. But no one could claim him. Let's go. Squall motioned to him, running past the city gates. They still needed to accomplish their mission. W wait a minute. Zell jogged up to him, still staring at the capsule. You're giving me this. I'm letting you borrow it, Squall corrected, his eyes scanning for enemies. If you can use him in this battle and take care of him, I'll probably let you keep him though. If he's okay with it. But... Zell shook his head, his fist closing on the capsule. You had to fight really hard for this guy, right? Why would you give him away? I can't use him because of Shiva. Squall tapped his head where he could feel the Ice Queen agreeing vehemently with his decision to give Ifrit away. They don't get along and their elemental affinities are opposites. I can't even junction him for power. You may, if he lets you. Zell fell silent for a moment, staring at the capsule. As they were coming up on the pub, Zell pressed the release on the marble-sized orb. It burst open and Ifrit's energy sank down into Zell's arm. 
he smiled as he felt warmth spread up from his hand and up into his brain. He settled into place at the base of Zell's skull and immediately Zell felt warmer. And it felt good. Ifrit was feeling him as curiously as Zell was and the two of them recognized raw power in each other. It burned through one another, tying them together. Zell grinned as he felt the strength of his limbs starting to climb in response to the new tenant of his mind. Oh, yeah, he grinned, sliding to a stop behind Squall who had stopped upon seeing Squad C through the window of the pub. They were pointing up and saying something he couldn't hear over the battle and through the glass. He got the general understanding though and his eyes moved up in time to see the G-Army soldiers positioned on the second-story walkway jumping down to land at their level. Hey, Squall, Zell stepped forward, smiling at his comrade. Allow me. I want to get feeling for this new GF. Be my guest. Squall gestured to the two men. They seeds, too. One of the soldiers asked the other, frowning. I told you, they're just cadets. Look at their uniform. Stop being a coward and fight. The other, wearing a captain's patch similar to the Squall's last opponent, snapped to his companion. Don't worry, Zell grinned, stretching out his wrists. I'm going to be seed by the end of the day. Squall hung back, silent as Zell lifted his fists into a fighting stance. Zell had held exactly two GFs in his life. Both of them were low-level, defensive GF. The kind of GF that was given to trainees in order to instruct them on how to equip a GF injunction magic. The kind that was returned to the garden staff by the end of the year. Ifrit was definitely not one of their kind. The Beast of Fire Primal and Earthy As Zell hastily threw some spells onto his power, Ifrit took them in gladly and grew only stronger. The metal and leather of Zell's gauntlets started steaming in the suddenly cool Dalit air as Ifrit's power soaked through his body and into his veins. This was what being a GF user was all about. This raw power and strength that came with sharing your magic and mind with the Guardian forces. Zell let out a breath that steamed in the air as the soldiers charged at him. The first swing bounced neatly off of his gauntlets. The second from the captain flew over his head as he dropped low. He came up again and his fist connected with the captain's gut. The man spit up as he fell back from Zell's punch. Laughing with the sheer amount of power running through him, Zell turned eagerly to fall into a fight with the next soldier. Squall stood back, arms crossed as he mentally critiqued Zell's performance. It wasn't his place, of course, to judge him. However, he wanted to see how his combat skills would increase now that he had a proper, offensive GF to supplement his own natural abilities. The slowness that Squall had noted before was gone now. With the fire beast powering his movements, Zell was now moving at a speed more suited to a seed cadet. The blows landed harder and with the distinct scent of burning metal, fabric or flesh depending on where he struck. Zell would earn no points for professionalism. However, Squall could see absolutely no flaws in his combat ability as he took on the pair of soldiers. It was a quick fight. The first man, the lower-ranked soldier, was felled by a backhanded blow to his head. He collapsed, his helmet smoking and his body unmoving. The CO, who a moment ago had been yelling at his man to cease his cowardice, was shaking and sputtering as he backed away. Zell didn't let him take more than few steps. He ran forward, grasped the man by the neck. He jerked him up into the sky and then slammed him bodily into the ground. Squall wasn't sure if he heard bones or cobblestone cracking but the captain didn't move again either. Zell stood back up straight, his breath still steaming as his inspiration rate increased from exertion. 
he grinned and looked at his own smoking gauntlets. Now, this is what I call a GF. And it's considered low level? Ha! Huh. Squall stepped forward as the smoking and steaming east as if Ritz's presence pulled back into Zell's mind. The fire would still be burning under the surface, but Zell didn't show it any longer. I can't believe you're wanting to give him up. Zell gushed, wondering how he was possibly going to give this marvelous creature back. I can't use him. Ergo, he's useless. Why keep something useless? Squall asked. Well, yeah, technically, but... Forget it. Squall stepped around him and pointed up the street where Cypher had run off to just a moment ago. We need to catch back up with our captain. Ugh, Zell made a face. What? Can you not refer to him as captain? I'd rather you not add to his already overinflated ego. Let's just go, Squall said before jogging off. He was of a mind to agree with Zell, but it was still his place to follow orders as a potential seed member. As they ran further up Main Street, following the curve of the road, they spotted Cypher. He was standing still. And for a moment Squall wondered if he had waited for them. Before he had time to tell himself that that was a foolish thought, Cypher pulled back his blade and drove it forward. A loud grunt of pain echoed just before a G-Army soldier collapsed over on the ground, his blood pooling from the wound in his chest. Cypher heard their footsteps and turned, a grin on his face. A drop of blood slid from Hyperion's length and splattered against the cobblestone. Did you boys hang back to have a tea party? He asked, grinning at them. Zell was already growling but Squall said nothing. Exam time. No point in responding now. Cypher didn't wait for a response. He turned, throwing back the long tail of his coat as he did so and pointed with Hyperion down the street. The central square is just up ahead. Hey! All you Galbadian cowards out there! Come out and show your faces! Don't leave me hanging now! Laughing strangely, Cypher sprinting down the road. Zell watched him go with a curious look, leaning back as though he were seeing a strange subject of a science experiment he didn't understand. What an idiot! Don't fall behind, Squall instructed him calmly, starting forward. Zell naturally fell in line with him. Cypher may be an idiot, but Zell had still come up with the luck of the draw in getting to be teamed with Squall. If Cypher was going to abandon his squad to go slay soldiers, then Zell was going to follow Squall instead. Squall wasn't sprinting like Cypher was but he still caught up with Cypher before he could charge into battle with the single G-Army soldier occupying the central square. Light flashed off of a lovely little fountain as Squall and Zell ran around to join with their captain who was, once again, toying with his opponent. Like that? Cypher asked, lunging forward. He deliberately only let his Hyperion sink deep enough in the man's arm to draw blood. He wasn't trying to disarm or kill him. That would end the fun early. Squall didn't have time for this. Pulling up his gun blade, Squall took aim from the entrance of the square. Cypher, in his dancing, moved around the man again, still laughing in that weird tone. Squall didn't use his gun blade one-handed in melee combat. When he was shooting it from a distance though, he had little choice. The recoil on the revolver absorbed into his arm and up his shoulder. The soldier Cypher had been tormenting fell over dead. Cypher came to a staggered halt. He sent a dark look over at Squall as he let the revolver down. The barrel still smoking from the bullet. 
That one was mine, Cypher growled. We don't have time for games, Squall returned. Did everyone but him forget this was an exam? Cypher growled and took a threatening step forward. Like he might very well try to fight Squall for daring to stop him. There may be more. Squall interrupted his stalking. It wasn't a threat so much as a distraction. He was pretty sure getting into a fight with his captain would cost him points. All right. Seemingly mollified, at least slightly, Cypher swept out his Hyperion and indicated to the area around them. I want you guys to scout the area for enemies. Bring them to me. Squall nodded and started making his way around the square. He could hear Zell and step behind him and, when he looked back, he saw the blonde scanning the rooftops and upper stories for enemies. That left Squall to scan the ground floors and streets. He recognized the street that split off and led to the mountains where Dalit had retreated to from the maps he had been given. Knowing he hadn't been instructed to go there, he avoided that road and continued on to the next street. A G Army standard issue jeep had been parked across the road, blocking it. The engine was off but Squall could hear something clanking around on the other side. As he and Zell approached, their footsteps caught the attention of the soldier making repairs to the downed vehicle on the other side. He came up and spotted them with a growl. Hey! Where's Jacobs? He demanded, looking around the square. You killed him. You bastards. I'll destroy you. For my brothers. Screaming out like a madman, he leapt over the jeep and charged at them. The move was so unexpected that Squall only had enough time to duck under the swinging saber. Behind him, Zell threw himself to the side, rolled, and came back up again. The two of them turned and looked back at the crazed soldier. For the glory! He yelled this time. Squall was suddenly worried. Not because of the man's righteous anger. It was the wild and erratic way he was swinging his saber. He clearly had very little if any experience with the blade. And if Squall had learned anything from the underclassmen it was that beginners could often land blows that more experienced fighters couldn't simply because they didn't realize they were endangering their own health in the process. The enraged Galbadian soldier came after Squall. Swinging his blade randomly and without any finesse, he swirled it around almost like a baton. It was wildly ineffective and inefficient and Squall was scared to try to block it because he didn't know where the block would lead. It could bury the blade in the soldier. It could bury the blade in himself. He avoided the question and ran around to the side. The saber hit the brick of the hotel and shards of metal flew away. Which only made Squall more worried because now the blade was serrated. It would do that much more damage. For the honor. He turned again and this time chased after Zell. He didn't even had a sword to protect himself. Zell followed Squall's example and just ran out of the way. For an enemy like this, it would be best to just let him tire himself out. It wouldn't take long with how much energy he was wasting swinging that wildly. Cypher walked over to them as the two of them were busy making him run in circles to chase the two of them. The soldier was already panting and his cries for honor and glory were becoming less and less furious. F fur! He panted, trying to raise his saber again. Gal! Badia! Squall ran out of the way again and found himself standing next to Cypher. What are you doing? He asked, glaring at Squall. Dealing with the enemy, he responded calmly. Whoa! Zell sprinted away from the soldier again. He turned and started shadow boxing again. That all you got? Come on! 
I'm... I will you. The man had to pause and catch his breath. You insolent. Puff, puff. I will end you. You got nothing. Zell continued to mock him, checking to see if he had any extra energy that he might use if they finally got in close. The soldier took some sloppy steps forward and Squall nodded, satisfied that he had tired himself out. This one is mine. Cypher called, running at the soldier. End it quickly. Squall ordered like he might be in charge. He didn't want to watch Cypher playing with his victims. Something he was used to seeing from training but something he didn't want to deal with in the middle of an exam. I'm the captain. Cypher reminded him angrily, trying to play with his new toy. This man was just too tired to do anything more than collapse at the first slice of Cypher's blade. Something that only annoyed Cypher. He wasn't any fun if he wasn't going to scream and thrash about. Growling, he swept his blade quickly across the man's neck. His body fell back and his head rolled away as Cypher turned and glared at Squall. Before he could snap, Squall spoke up, infuriatingly calmly. I think that's all of them. Cypher grumbled something they couldn't hear before rolling his shoulders. Well then, we're on standby until the enemy comes. He strutted forward and walked back towards the fountain. Stand by, he growled to himself. How boring. A loud explosion echoed down from the mountains. Squall and Zell both turned and looked up but Cypher kept his eyes on the streets around them. Sounds like it's starting, Squall said thinking that plenty of time would have passed for the seeds to get up in the mountains to provide backup for the Dalit army. Bring it on, Cypher growled lowly. The rhythmic clicking of claws on the cobblestone rang out in the square. Squall looked over to see a dog emerge from the shadows of one of the doorways and come forward cautiously. He was probably one of the residents' pets. What's a dog doing here? Zell frowned. Did his owners not bring him into hiding with them? Irresponsible, Squall thought with derision. It annoyed him when people didn't take proper care of the things under their care. A dog had no place in a war zone. It should have been hiding out with the rest of the evacuated civilians. The curious pooch, seeing that they weren't dressed in proper military garb, wasn't scared of them. He came forward, sniffing curiously at the end of Cypher's trench coat. Snarling in irritation, Cypher swung his blade out towards the dog. The animal only managed to avoid getting decapitated by a few hair lengths. It whined as it realized they weren't much different at all from the soldiers. Get out of here! Cypher commanded, swinging back for another hit. Scram! The dog didn't need to be told. It was already sprinting away with its tail between its legs. Squall felt rather sorry for it though he was glad in a way. Maybe now the creature would find some place to hide for the duration of the battle and wouldn't die. He didn't have much time to consider the dog. Cypher was running around to the other side of the fountain and looking up at the mountains. He knew that Seed was supposed to be flushing the G army down the mountains and they would have to come this way. Hey! Galbadian soldiers! What are you waiting for? Come show me what you got. He screamed to the heavens, swinging his Hyperion threateningly. What's he doing? Zell asked Squall quietly from their side of the fountain. Cypher was still standing there, practically bouncing in anticipation. Let him be, Squall replied calmly. As long as he's doing that. He's not getting in trouble. Zell. Uh, yes. 
Zell stood a little straighter as Squall looked back at him. Don't relax. We've cleared the area, but this is still an active battle zone. If the seeds succeed in flushing out the G army, they'll be coming this way. I want to know they're coming before they get here. Roger, Zell nodded firmly. I'll keep an eye out. But, uh, what do we do about... him? He finished on a whisper, pointing over to Cypher. Their captain was tense, still waiting with his blade raised. Leave him alone, Squall repeated. Just keep your eyes sharp. Got it. Zell turned to watch his third of the square, Squall on his other side. From where he was standing, he could see up into the mountains. Though not clear enough to be able to see if anyone was making their way down yet. He made a mental note that, for future missions, it would be wise to bring binoculars if there were going to be mountains involved. Zell wasn't sure how much time passed, but Squall was. He was marking the passing of it simply because he didn't like not having that information. He liked to know when he arrived at a place and how long he spent there. It just made logging reports easier later. It took exactly 23 minutes for Cypher to get bored. Which surprised Squall. He didn't think that his normally impatient training partner would last that long. It was probably only the constant fighting sounds echoing down the mountains that kept him waiting. It made it seem like the retreating army would be coming any second. Twenty-three minutes into the wait though, Cypher finally broke. Anything yet? He asked, his body still tense and prepared. Which was the exact opposite of Zell. Though he was looking around as suggested by Squall, he was doing it while pacing with his hands in his pockets. Because it was a question from his CO, Squall looked down the street to see if the G army was finally coming down. It was just as empty as it had been earlier. Nothing, he said calmly. Hey look, Zell grinned. The dog is back. Here, puppy. Come here, boy. Zell, leave the wildlife alone, Squall told him dully. Still keeping us waiting? Cypher asked, still focused on an impending battle that Squall was sure wasn't as immediate as he would have preferred. I think the dog prefers Cypher, Zell frowned as the curious pooch sniffed cautiously towards the silver trench coat again. Think maybe he smells like dog treats? Squall frowned the hound as it sniffed at Cypher again. Cypher was shaking now, his head lowering in fury. Squall recognized that look. He was about to do something rash and stupid. That's it. He yelled swiping out against the dog again. I can't take it anymore. What is this, some kind of dog training? The dog ran off, running this time towards Squall. He looked down as the dog approached, frowning at the way it was scenting the air. What do you smell? He asked as though anticipating an answer. As though he was responding. The dog lifted its head and let out a long howl. Squall frowned as that was followed by another then a third. Footsteps sounded throughout the square and Squall took a knee. Just beside him, Zell followed suit, getting down on all fours. Cypher didn't kneel but he was obstructed by a building. The footsteps materialized into a soldier on the other side of the fountain. The dog beside Squall growled at him as he looked around for enemies. Before Squall, or more likely Cypher, could charge at him, he turned and gestured to someone behind him. He ran past the square, down the road leading to the mountains. He was followed by another. Then another. And another. An entire platoon ran past and Squall frowned. He didn't think the three of them could take on an entire company. 
What is it? Zell asked. He couldn't see from his angle. It's the enemy. Squall said, watching as the last of them ran down the road. Seed wasn't driving the G army down from the mountains. The G army was calling up reinforcements. Where the hell they going? Zell asked as they stood back up. Squall looked up towards the mountain where a large, defunct communication tower sat. A relic from a time before his birth. Hey! What is that? Zell frowned not recognizing the technology. No one used towers anymore. Not since the technology suddenly stopped working nearly twenty years ago. Before Squall could explain that, Cypher spoke up. He pointed his Hyperion to the dish and grinned hungrily. That is our next destination. Squall turned, his face impassive as Cell reeled in surprise. But... That's against orders. He cried. Cypher grinned at him. Weren't you just saying how bored you were? No, Zell frowned. That was you. You were pacing though. I know you're as hungry as I am to test your skills. To prove yourself. Squall. Zell turned to him expectantly. As though he expected Squall to disagree as well. He had his orders though. I stand by the captain's decision, he replied calmly. Cypher gave him a look and scoffed. Captain's decision? That doesn't sound like you. He came forward and Squall regarded him without changing his expression as Cypher stepped to his side. He looked into Squall's eyes and grinned. You want to wreak some havoc too, don't you? Laughing as though they were sharing in something, Cypher grabbed Squall's shoulder companionably. Wreak some havoc? Hein. Cypher was so dramatic sometimes. Squall jerked his shoulder out from Cypher's grasp. It's a good opportunity to test out my training. Thanks to you, I feel like I can take on anyone. Even if they do fight dirty. Like you. Cypher grinned as though Squall had complimented him. You'll thank me when the time comes. Seriously. Did Cypher get all his lines from old movies? What the hell? Zell looked between them, a frown on his face. I thought you guys didn't get along? You're like... All buddy-buddy now. Squall turned, but Cypher kept on grinning at him. Did they get along? Not really. But that didn't mean Squall didn't respect Cypher's skills. His dedication. His tenacity. They had been training partners too long for Squall to hold any serious grudges against him. Any anger that they felt towards one another was invariably worked out in battle. In that manner, they didn't get along. But they weren't quite unfriendly either. When they weren't training, they were actually rather civil towards one another. Listen. Zell frowned between them, stepping forward. This ain't no ordinary battle. It's an exam. An important one. I'm telling ya, we have to stick to orders. Squall's eyebrow raised, the only mark of surprise on his face. He couldn't actually believe that Zell had remembered that. He had felt like the only one keeping that in mind this entire time. Cipher sneered in disgust, rolling his eyes. You stay here then. I don't need any Boy Scouts. Zell's eyes flashed in anger as he raised his shaking fist. What was that? Don't take him seriously, Zell, Squall told him, heading off the fight before it happened. He turned back to his captain. Cypher, if we're gonna go, let's hurry. 
Cypher grinned darkly, as though pleased with Squall's response. He turned and pointed with Hyperion and called out in a very official sounding voice. The enemy is headed for that facility. We, Squad B, are to secure the summit. Move out. All right, Squall nodded, acquiescing easily to the obvious order. Zell, still following Squall shook his head but gave in. Ch. Fine. Cypher ran off ahead again, eager to get to his next fight. Squall and by extension Zell, followed after him at a calmer pace. You know he's going to have us both flunking this exam, right? Zell grumbled bitterly. Not at all, Squall responded, still at his ease. Zell frowned. And what is that supposed to mean? Squall didn't answer him. Dalit was a port town similar to Balam, with one major difference. Dalit was on a man-made island connected to the mainland by a long concrete bridge. Separated into two lanes, one towards the mountains and one towards the plains, the one to the mountains could only be accessed by walking through the city first. The road over the water ended at a long, winding staircase up the mountains. It was currently covered in debris and bodies of those killed in the battle. They wore mostly Dalit uniforms. They didn't get very far up the steps when a rustling behind a boulder to their left had them reaching for their weapons. One of the Dalit uniforms came crawling out from a bush. He was shaking, his clothes stained with blood and dirt. He caught sight of them and went still like a deer in lights. Then he stuttered, panicked. W.W. Who are you? Cypher growled at him, probably angry that he couldn't attack. So it was Squall who answered. His calm voice, in such direct contrast to the commotion around them, seemed to put the soldier at ease. Don't worry. We're seed candidates dispatched by Garden, hired by the Dalit Dukedom Parliament to assist the Dalit army in this battle. The man nodded, accepting that easily. That was what Seed did after all. So what's going on up there? Cypher asked eagerly, nodding his head towards the summit. The man addressed Squall when he answered. The Galbadian soldiers have entered the abandoned communication tower. They've barricaded themselves inside. It's like a siege up there. Man. Zell grumbled. Can't be easy, can it? On top of that, the soldier continued, panting hard now with blood loss. That place has always been a nesting ground for monsters. If you guys are going up be care. The man suddenly stopped. Mid-sentence. Squall frowned at him. Before he could ask what was wrong, the man screamed again. His body jerked back violently and he reached out desperately. H help! Squall took the steps two at a time to reach the downed soldier. He was technically their client. It was his job to see to the client's safety. His hand darted out, aiming for the man's hand. Another sudden yank and the man disappeared into the bushes behind the boulder. Squall hear the sickening, wet brunch of a body being bit into as the soldier's screams suddenly cut off. Not wanting to risk the same fate, he jumped back down the stairs. His hand went to his revolver's hilt as he heard the unmistakable shh of scales against stone. The bushes rustled again as the enormous snake monster slithered out from its hiding spot. Blood splashed around its lips and against its skin. Its tongue flicked out, tasting their scent as it regarded them through beady eyes that saw in heat rather than light. Squall knew these monsters from long-distance training exercises on the Galbadian continent. They were quite common in this area, though Squall had little experience facing them. An Anaconjure Oh, 
Yes, Cypher very nearly drooled at the large reptile facing them. Now this is more like a challenge. Hey, you two can help, but let me have the finishing blow. I want the joy of killing this thing myself. Joy. Zell repeated, confused. Squall paid neither of them any mind. His eyes were focused on the serpent that was moving in a very deceptively slow manner just over their heads on the steps. He really did hate giving up the height advantage in a battle. It made everything that much more complicated. The snake was watching Squall carefully as he was the closest source of heat. Squall was staring at its body, waiting for the moment when its muscles would bunch up in preparation to strike. Here, Scaly, Cypher cajoled eagerly. Come get some. The snake hissed and Squall caught the distinct and rather noxious scent of its venom. It was dripping from its fangs, mixing with the dead man's blood. The snake hissed a second time, its head swinging around gently as though trying to hypnotize its audience. All the more reason for Squall to stare at its body and not its head. He would rather not get caught up in those slow, deliberate movements. The strike came just as quickly as Squall feared it would. The monster barely even reared back. It seemed like he just shot forward like a bullet from a gun. Squall, having been so carefully studying its muscles, still only had enough time to bring up his revolver. He felt and heard the fangs of the enormous snake hitting the metal. He fell backwards off of the steps and caught himself before he hit the ground. The snake jerked back and swung its head around as though to get the sensation of its fangs grazing metal out of its head. This one is mine! Cypher yelled, charging up into the fight. The height advantage didn't matter to him, only the thrill of a good monster hunt did. The snake struck again. Cypher followed suit. It seemed like his blade and the fangs bounced off of each other. Cypher kept pushing forward though until he was on the same level as the snake. He had taken away its height advantage. Zell, come at it from above, Squall ordered, stepping up again. He covered the snake from below. It was hissing again, looking between its two targets. Zell ran around the boulder the snake had concealed itself behind. He grabbed the side of it and used his feet and arms to propel himself up. He landed on top of the boulder and grinned down at the snake below. Now he had the height advantage. One clean cut ought to do it, Cypher grinned, pantomiming slicing the snake's head. Squall lunged forward and sliced across the air. He didn't mean to hit the snake but the snake didn't know that. It reared back, hissing. Squall didn't expect the tail. He also didn't see it coming. The long length of it whipped around and slammed into Squall's side. The skin was hard like stone and the muscles underneath dense. Squall felt the air rush from his lungs as he was thrown bodily to the side. The anaconjure hissed at him as though mocking his pain. Woo! Zell yelled like a battle cry as he jumped from the rock. The snake's back was to him, he didn't see the blonde warrior incoming. Zell hit the back of its head. His legs wrapped around its neck right under its hood which he grabbed like a steering wheel. The snake reared back, throwing itself to the side to dislodge his attacker. Zell hooped again as he held on tighter. If I cut you chicken wuss, don't blame me, Cypher threatened. You better not cut me, Zell yelled back. Squall pushed himself to his feet grabbing for his bruised side. Shiva let loose a cure spell into his body and the pain faded. He straightened his torso and rolled his shoulders. Ow! he said lamely to himself. Squall blinked at the scene before him. How much could change in a few short seconds? 
Zell was riding the snake like a bucking chocobo. Cypher was fainting, lunging, trying to get a cut in the snake's skin. The snake kept pulling back, throwing itself around. Someone check my time. Zell laughed as the snake whipped its head back and forth. I thought I told you to leave the wildlife alone, Squall said, his face and voice deadpan. Hold it still. Cypher snapped in irritation. Let me kill it. Hey, you think this is easy? Watch the rock, Squall told him calmly. Wah! Whoa! Zell's legs released and he threw his own body up and over the snake's head to avoid getting crushed against the boulder. The snake smashed itself against it instead and let out a loud hiss now directly in Zell's face. Oh, nasty! He coughed, turning his face. That is some potent venom. Hey, don't let it bite you. Thank you, Zell, Squall said sarcastically as Cypher rolled his eyes. Zell was now holding onto the snake's hood from the front. The snake was biting at him but Zell was using its own hood to hold it back. His feet were planted against its belly, keeping it at a distance as his head jerked back to avoid the flying venom. Will one of you do something? He yelled. Actually, Cypher grinned, I'm kind of enjoying myself like this. Cypher, you bossed a woe. Hey. That was close. You know, if your teammates die, that could be an automatic fail, Squall told their captain calmly. Cypher sighed. Oh, all right. Squall was just a step behind Cypher as they charged across the steps towards the snake. It couldn't see them coming since Zell was in its face. It didn't pull back in time. Cypher sliced forward. Hyperion cut easily though the Anaconjur's skin. However, the dense muscle proved too hard for it. Hyperion's path diverted. The hood on the left side of its face started bleeding. Zell cried out as the snake reared back in pain. Squall came in under Zell. The revolver cut swiftly through. The snake's body was almost like trying to cut through a tree, its muscles were so dense. Squall's blade, stronger than Cypher's was more than up to the task. Zell cried out as the snake's lost head slammed to the ground. To avoid impaling himself on the still very potent fangs, he swung his body up and over the head. The snake's dark blood started flowing down the steps as Squall moved out of the way. Hey! Cypher snarled at him. I told you it was mine. Oops, Squall shrugged. Damn it, Squall. That's against orders. You're losing points for that. Actually, Squall gave him an easy look, you said to let you have the kill. It wasn't phrased as an order. I didn't disobey anything. You just weren't fast enough. Cypher snarled at him and his grip on Hyperion tightened. Once again, Squall wondered if their captain was going to start this fight right here during the middle of the test. He didn't think he would be able to ignore an outright challenge like that. Zell, either oblivious or ignoring the tension between them, kneeled down at the monster's head. He poked at it with a grimace. Damn! That thing is ugly! Careful, Zell, Squall looked at him. Why? It's dead. Yeah, but its reflexes could still... Ah! Zell threw himself back as the snake's head jerked as though to bite him. Venom shot from the fangs, dripping down its face. Cypher chuckled at him. Good going, chicken wuss. You were almost killed by a dead snake. You know, 
it's not an automatic fail if a team member dies of stupidity. Cipher, Zell growled at him from his place on the ground. Squall ignored their bickering and let his eyes move up towards the communication dish. He could only see the edge of it now that they were at the base of the mountain. Breeding ground for monsters, hey? Zell sighed, standing and dusting off his uniform. That sucks. Cypher grinned, looking up as well. That just means more fun for us. Come on. Zell frowned at him as he started up the stairs. Fun? Police. Squall ignored both of them and began climbing after his captain. Sounds of the battle between the G-Army, Dalit, and the Seeds had moved off by the time that they reached the top of the cliffs. On an outlook that gave them a great view of the entrance of the communication tower the three of them lowered themselves to get a better look. I see two soldiers, Squall said, his eyes going over. Only the two. They didn't really need any more than that. There was only one door. Agreed, Cypher nodded. One of the soldiers was standing guard, his eyes moving around the terrain to spot either monsters or soldiers. The other was doing something with an access panel. Even as they watched, the door to the tower opened and a third soldier came out. They gave the others a salute. The generating is up and running, he reported. Though his voice wasn't loud, the acoustics of the terrain brought his words right up to them at the overlook. No problem with the boosters, the second soldier nodded, shutting the access panel. The hell they doing? Cypher frowned. They were silent for a moment and Squall could practically hear the communications from a third party in their helmets. Cable disconnection confirmed. The first man finally said. Beginning exchange process. Roger, Soldier 2 nodded. All three men ran inside and Squall heard the sound of a metal lock being thrown. The three of them stood back up again. Repairs. He guessed easily. Why would they try to repair a relic like this? Who cares? Cypher scoffed before grinning over towards Squall. This must be your first real battle. You scared. Squall shrugged. I don't know. I try not to think about it. I love battles, he said, relishing in just saying the words. I fear nothing. The way I look at it, as long as you make it out of a battle alive, you're one step closer to fulfilling your dream. Squall, not expecting the direction this conversation had just taken, looked to Cypher in surprise. What? Your dream? You have one too, don't you? Cypher asked, smiling at him. Dream? Like, a plan for the future? He planned on joining Seed, fighting as long as possible, then retiring when he couldn't pass the yearly physical. He wouldn't really call it a dream. More like it was something he was just going to do because what else could he do? Sorry, but I'm gonna pass on the subject. Yo. Zell stepped forward eagerly. Let me in on it, too. Like he was interrupting something private, Cypher snarled at him. Mind your own business. Immediately, Zell was glowering at Cypher. That smug look on his face always managed to get Zell's blood boiling. He couldn't even really say why it bothered him so much. Others had disparaged him before, but it still didn't sting so much as Cypher's comments. He started imagining what it would be like to actually punch Cypher. To feel that smug grin turn to surprise and dismay when Zell's fist slammed against it. In his head, he could feel Ifrit nodding along eagerly with his anger. 
Ifrit enjoyed the power of anger. He was only encouraging the feeling in the mind of his new master. Frickin' hell! He snarled. He really hated him. He really just wanted to hurt him. He knew Ifrit was influencing that anger and he didn't care. He accepted it eagerly. Zell didn't even realize he had actually started pantomiming the movements for knocking out a few of Cypher's stupid teeth until Cypher grinned at him about it. What's the matter, Zell? He asked, his voice mocking like he was talking to a baby. Swatting flies. Ifrit was now openly suggesting ripping Cypher's arms off. A suggestion that Zell was finding more tempting by the second. Just seeing Cypher turn and walk away, his trench coat flapping as he did so, was enough attitude to make Zell want to punch him out. Damn you! He snarled. It wasn't too late to catch up to him. Zell, Squall started, trying to calm him down. His gauntlets were smoking again. He was suddenly very glad if it couldn't be in his mind. Shiva agreed most emphatically. There you are. Squall stopped and Zell jumped in surprise. The cry of a high-pitched voice broke through his anger and the smoke eased from his gauntlets as he turned. Squall was rather sure he would recognize that upturned hair anywhere. The tiny sprite girl from this morning was panting on on the rocks she had climbed over to get to the top of the cliff. Squall was wondering why she hadn't just taken the stairs when she started walking down. Her steps were uncertain and shaky. Squall wasn't sure if it was her feet or the ground that slipped out from under her. Either way, she slipped. Down she tumbled, rolling like an expert. Her body dumped itself nearly right at their feet and she sat up, grabbing for her head. She caught sight of their expressions, Squall's blank, Zell's concern, and she grinned, sticking out her tongue, winking. Stuck that landing, she laughed, getting up. She dusted off her skirt. A move rather useless since all the dust was clinging to her knee-high socks. She nodded and beamed at them still panting a bit. Are you? Squad B. Squall nodded. Her face broke out in a wide smile. Oh, thank Hein. I'm a messenger and hey. Wait a minute. I know you. You're the guy. You know, the one who showed me around. Aren't you? Thanks again. I was able to find my way around Garden all by myself after you left. You know her? Zell whispered, confused. The girl nodded, still beaming. Name's Selfie, from Squad A. You're Squad Captain Cypher, right? Where is he? Squall turned and pointed as a silver trench coat ran into view in front of the locked door. Cypher turned and looked back up the cliff where Squall was still standing. He grinned and held out his arms as though inviting Squall to behold him. One of these days, I'm gonna tell ya about my romantic dream. Yeah, Squall was rather certain Cypher got his lines from old movies and books. Romantic dream? What did that even really mean? Beside him. Selfie sighed. Man, this sure is tough. They warn you about the seat exam, but you really aren't prepared for it. Captain. Wait up. Before Squall could stop her, she charged at the cliff. Zell cried out but it was too late. Selfie slammed her foot down against the rocks and leapt forward with a cry of either delight or effort. It was kind of hard to tell and the mystery of why she climbed the cliff instead of the stairs suddenly made some sense. Squall stepped forward in time to see her stick the landing. She ran forward a few steps before she realized they hadn't followed her. She turned around and waved her hands up at them. 
What are you waiting for? Come on. We have to catch up to him. Please tell me we aren't jumping, Zell moaned unhappily. Of course not. The path is this way, come on. Who would jump from a cliff? Besides a hyperactive sprite girl that preferred rock climbing to stair climbing that is. It wasn't a very long path down off of the overlook and towards the front of the communication tower but Selfie was already shifting with impatience when they caught up. What took you so long? She asked grumpily. It would have been much quicker if you had just jumped. Quicker. Zell repeated like she had said something crazy. Police. You wouldn't normally jump off of a cliff, okay? Ain't that right, Squall? It would be faster, he admitted making selfie beam. But it's far more reasonable to just walk around. Selfie scoffed at his logic. Yeah, but I know how to jump off a cliff. Why waste the time being a chicken walking around it? What did you just call me? Zell yelled, suddenly furious. Selfie, instead of backing down, grinned at him. Why are you so angry? Cause I called you a chicken? Are you a chicken? What the A-R-G-H? Why is everyone? I am not a chicken. Selfie giggled at his reaction. Well, if you don't like chicken, how about... A pig. Pig. Squall looked between of them wondering when the right moment to step in would be. Zell looked spitting mad, ready to throw blows. Selfie seemed unaffected, grinning at him and continuing to needle him about what was clearly a sore spot. Oh, but you look more like a chicken, she frowned, her eyes still dancing. Look, you even have a crest and everything. She doubled over, holding her stomach as she laughed at him. Zell, Squall said his name calmly. Your gauntlets are smoking again. Tch. Zell turned away, forcing himself to calm down. Chicken, pig, whatever. Call me what you want. I don't care anymore. Don't take it so personally, Zell, Squall told him, pleased Zell had exercised self-control. He grumbled under his breath but his gauntlets remained smoke-free. Selfie was trying to control her giggling but she didn't stop until Squall fixed her with a look. Sorry, she shrugged, not really sorry at all. Shall we get going? She turned towards the door before she seemed to remember something and turned back. Oh, almost forgot to mention. I'm probably going to need some support. I don't have a GF with me. You went into battle without one. Squall frowned. He didn't have two spares. Selfie shrugged looking suddenly self-conscious as her eyes moved away. It's not that big of a deal. I just thought you might want to know if we're going to be fighting together. Why is everyone around me so careless? Squall asked himself. He didn't bring it up though. He stepped forward to take point on the mission to reconnoiter with his captain. Cypher had jimmied the locked door open. Squall could see where he had blasted out the electronic locks to be able to reach within. The three of them stepped into the shadow of the entrance. Zell looked up, fighting back a sudden sense of vertigo to be staring up so high. So this is a communication tower? How do you think it worked? Sure is big, Selfie said, staring up as well. The screams of the frightened and the pained hit Squall's ears a moment before the jimmy door to the tower slid open and a terrified soldier ran out. He was bleeding from some very familiar wounds to his arms and torso. Cypher stepped into the doorway, glowering at them while his eyes danced with mirth. Coward! 
Hey. Selfie stepped forward quickly. Cypher ignored her as he turned to go back in. The captain's getting away. She yelled at the other two, charging at the doorway. Squall and Zell were just a step behind her. They still weren't fast enough to catch Cypher in the bottom floor of the tower. The scent of rusting metal hit their noses as they gazed about the darkened room. It was cold inside but not silent. Squall could hear some machinery in the distance. Even as he watched, the platform elevator hit the ground from the top floor. No one was aboard. Think he went up? He asked them. Even as the question came from his mouth, he knew that wouldn't be right. If Cypher had gone up, the elevator would have stopped with him. Someone must have called it and left before it arrived. Probably one of the soldiers Cypher had chased off. Hey! Selfie yelled out, her voice echoing metallically off of the cold systems around them. It was rather eerie to hear. Squad B Captain! Let's take the lift, Squall suggested. It wasn't like there was anywhere else to go. They stepped aboard and Zell hit the control switch to send them up. There were only two arrows, an up and a down. There were no floor settings which just made things easier. The platform purred to life and began pulling them. Selfie laughed and leaned out over the edge to watch the floor shrink away from them. Wow, this lift is pretty cool. Zell grinned at her bent body. Don't get too excited or you'll fall. She rolled her eyes but stepped back cautiously. Her words were still firm when she snorted in derision at his comment. Like I'm really going to. The biggest panel on the master control center of the communication tower had been pulled off and set aside. Clad in the red of a superior officer. Major Biggs was growling as he fumbled with the wire cutter he had been fighting with most of the day. From behind him, his lieutenant, Wedge, crept closer needing to step over and around the ever-growing messy pile of tools and parts. He still saw his regulation blue but the patch on his arm identified him as a higher-ranked soldier. He still saluted his commanding officer as he approached. Major Biggs! There has been a report of a monster-shaped shadow on top of the tower. A little more here. All right, and cut gently. And pull like out. My dem hand. Major Biggs. Wedge tried again. Be quiet. Biggs snapped at him without turning around. Can't you see I'm busy? Let's see. This goes here like this. And... Ugh, geez, what's with these crappy old tools? And this crappy old circuitry? And... And... Why do I have to make all the repairs? Ah. Wedge hadn't made it this far in the army by not knowing when to leave his SOS alone. He saluted him again, unbothered by his anger. Sir, I'll just check around myself while repairs are being done. He received no reply as he walked away, but he hadn't really expected one. Biggs continued talking to himself as he pushed another wire into a spot where he thought it looked like it belonged. Which was really how this entire repair job had been going. No one had bothered to ask if he knew how to do this. Or even hire someone who did. So Biggs had been just putting things in places and hoping they worked. Let's see. He growled, looking around for something he hadn't shoved somewhere. He didn't hear the hum of the elevator platform coming up from behind him. Put this here. And this goes here. And... Hey. A light Biggs hadn't seen before flashed green, blinking at him through the terminal. 
the elevator stopped and footsteps announced the arrival of visitors that he still didn't hear. He was so focused on watching that dot and hoping that it would turn blue. Two. Three. Four blinks later and the light turned a steady, strong blue. There. Biggs very nearly yelled in victory slash relief. It's complete. He wasn't sure what he expected by announcing it. Maybe applause. He kind of felt like he deserved it. The tower stared shaking and shifting as nearly ancient technology roared to life for the first time in almost 20 years. Squall, Zell, and Selfie, having stepped from the platform, looked around in surprise as lights suddenly burst into life all around them. Below, they could hear machines kicking into life and springing to action. It may have been an old machine, but it was well made. It happily and easily started going through its startup functions. The rush of air from below was Squall's warning that something was coming up. He turned quickly in time to see a long tube of metal shooting up through the hollow center of the communication tower. He took a step closer, craning his neck for a better look. The tube of metal speared the sky before turning and tilting at an angle. Then the tube burst open like a flower in bloom. The metal plates of the dish rushed out to fill the gaps. Then the dish turned up and a series of antennae shot out and sparked. Squall could hear something like a hum as the radio tower started operating again for the first time in nearly 20 years. With the show over, Squall turned back and looked at the Major who was staring at the bright lights of the functioning terminal with his hands on his hips and his chest puffed out in obvious pride. What do you think you're doing? He asked gruffly. The Major actually jumped in surprise. He turned and looked at them, confused. He wasn't part of the battle, he hadn't heard that seats and candidates had come to join the fight. He pointed his gun arm at them and growled. Likewise, mister. What do you think you're doing? He frowned and his arm lowered as he realized that they weren't with the G-Army. An army that was currently supposed to be protecting the lower floors so he could get on with his repairs. H. Hey, what happened to all the soldiers down below? None of them said anything. Selfie might have giggled a bit. Wedge! Major Biggs yelled out. Take care of these twerps! Squall looked around for reinforcements and found none. W. Wedge! Major Biggs turned around looking for his patrolling lieutenant. Squall crossed his arms as Selfie shifted her weight, grinning. Zell was nearly giggling himself. It was kind of funny in a way. Made Squall glad he wasn't following the graduate program to join the Galbadian military. Major Biggs laughed self-consciously. I, ah. Uh, well, uh. I seem to be done here, so I'll just be. On. My. He paused looking at them as they stared back. His gun came up quickly and nervously. I, I am leaving. Move. Move it. Move. He started making a wide circle around them towards the elevator. Squall let him go because he didn't really care about fighting a man who clearly meant no harm. The humming elevator announced the arrival of another person. Squall wondered if it was the missing wedge and if he would need to fight after all. No. And yes. It was Cypher. And his first move upon landing at their level was to swing his blade out and knock Major Big's gun clear from his arm. He grinned at them. Sorry to crash the party, he laughed, clearly not sorry at all. Ah. 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 Biggs grabbed at his now bleeding hand. Are you crazy? 
Just shut up, Cypher snarled at him, bored already with his yelling. Yes. Yes Squall was going to have to fight. Cypher, bored, turned and walked back to the elevator. I'm so done with these cowards. Squall, be a good subordinate and clean up. That's an order, by the way, in case there was confusion. Didn't doubt it for a second, he mumbled to himself, drawing his revolver. Selfie, I know you're not part of our squad. You can count on me, she laughed, reaching for her own weapons. A pair of nunchaku slid neatly from the sheath at her lower back. She twirled them up over her head and caught the other end in her free hand neatly. Biggs, meanwhile, ran for his downed gun. He snatched it up off the ground and turned to them with a snarl of anger. Prepare for the worst, you brats. Major Biggs carried a regulation G Army submachine gun. It used the bullets in his arm canisters to fire off a rain of fast-moving, small, low-penetrating bullets. They were quicker than Squall's own ammunition, but didn't have nearly as much power. The three of them scattered out of the way as the bullets began pinging off of and through the metal grating at their feet. Guns used to be the predominant weapon in the world. They were easy to use, fast, and deadly even if your aim was just okay. However, that was no longer the case. Not since Odin had learned how to capture magic, junction it to GFs, and enable its use for humans. Shiva, Ice Shield! Squall commanded, throwing up his arm. She complied immediately, anticipating his need. Squall made sure to throw it up wide enough to cover himself and Selfie. She took a stop just behind him, grinning as bullets hit the ice. The hot metal of the bullets either embedded themselves in the ice or shattered pieces of it. But even as it was being destroyed, Squall could keep building up more. While Biggs's attention was on the two of them, Zell ran around the tower. He actually circled the entire length. As he was running, his gauntlets started smoking. Steam came from his breath as if it released his own bestial power into his limbs. The two of them hadn't been together nearly so long as Shiva and Squall. However, the love and respect for raw power burned through both of them. Connecting them. As Biggs was trying in vain to shoot out Squall's ice shield, Zell let out a loud cry of power. He didn't notice the blue uniformed man he ran past. He was so focused on the red target as he circled around the tower that everything else faded. Zell bent down low, coming in fast and hot. His fist slammed into the Major's back. Bullets flew up into the air as Biggs's body shot forward. Squall and Selfie jumped apart and away from the shield just before he crashed into it. Ice shards flew everywhere as his body rolled. Major Biggs The three cadets turned as the blue lieutenant ran towards them. What is the enemy doing here? Ugh! Major Biggs had to struggle to stand up. He felt like he had been knocked into next week and it took two cure spells to dull the pain enough to let him stand. Wedge he snapped, staggered upright. Where were you? No pay for you this month. Wedge flinched in pain, but he wasn't exactly surprised. He sighed as he brought up his sword. I knew I should have stayed home. You too, Squall looked to Zell and Selfie. Take the lieutenant. I'll handle the major. Got it. Selfie laughed running to stand beside Zell. Squall took a step to the side and raised his blade to the Major. Ha! Huh. One brat! He laughed breathlessly. It was hard to do it around the pain in his back. He was seriously hoping that his cure spells could fix whatever he felt was broken, though he was sure they would only dull the pain. 
cure didn't heal fractured bones or ruptured organs. He would need a cure spell to accomplish that and there was no way his army would part with such things to their common officers. I think it might be a bit of an unfair fight, Squall said, noticing the way the Major moved. That blow had done some damage. If I were you, I would just leave. You need medical aid. Don't tell me what to do. I won't let you command a Galbadian officer. It was a suggestion, Squall said, raising his blade obligingly. But, if you insist. Major Biggs let out another volley of bullets. They were trapped easily in another ice shield that Squall had Shiva summon with an arm gesture. His eyebrow raised and he wondered if Biggs planned on just shooting until he ran out of ammo. Behind him, Selfie was standing beside Zell as Wedge carefully assessed them. Come on, she grumbled impatiently. Just attack already. I'm not stupid, he said, his eyes moving over their clearly professional forms. I know those uniforms. You two are seed cadets, aren't you? I'm not going to rush a pair of seeds, not even trainee ones. Zell grinned. I'll give you points for that. First smart thing I've heard you guys say all day. Not that it's going to save you any, Selfie giggled. Zell, you prefer rump roast or prime rib? I'm a prime guy all the way, he laughed, boxing at the air a bit. Sparks came from his gauntlets as they continued to heat up. Wedge frowned, not understanding the terminology. It's all yours then, Selfie beamed. She tucked her nunchaku under arm before running off to the side and out of sight. Wedge didn't get a chance to track her movement with his eyes. Zell charged forward as she was sprinting away and he took up the entirety of Wedge's vision. Cautious, knowing who he was fighting again, Wedge blocked the attack with his blade. And the next one. And the next. Zell grinned. Hey, you're good. Oh, you don't mean that, Wedge smiled. He knew they were enemies, but somehow it was still nice to hear such a compliment from someone from the seed program. No, really. Zell slammed his fist forward. It connected with Wedge's saber and the sparks went flying from his gauntlet. I've been fighting G-Army thugs all day. And I have to say, you're the only one that's actually been smart in the fight. Well, I do pride myself on my forethought. It's kept me alive this long. Wedge swung over his head and Zell ran past. He turned with a kick that Wedge blocked with his bracer. Clearly, Zell grinned, stepping back. That's not an easy feat in the G-Army either. I enjoy a challenge, Wedge raised his hand, throwing a lightning attack Zell's way. Zell had no way of blocking it. He cried out as the electric current shot through his body causing pain and muscle twitches. Ifrit let loose a cure spell and when Zell opened his eyes again, steam was coming from his nostrils. And you've got a good grip on your magic, he continued to praise him. Most g goons need a few seconds to charge a spell. You must practice. At least an hour every day, Wedge agreed, taking his advantage to bring a quick assault on Zell. He had his smoking gauntlets up, deflecting each quick blow as it came down on him. I admit it, you're a worthy opponent, Zell laughed. Nice to finally fight someone worth the fight. You're too kind. Wedge kicked out and slammed his foot against Zell's leg. Doing so opened a gap in his defense. Wedge struck forward quickly and a long slice appeared on Zell's shoulder. His blood started staining into his shirt but he didn't feel it because if it gave him another cure spell to stop the bleeding and begin the healing. You have forgotten one thing though. Zell blocked another slice from connecting and slammed his fist forward. 
he hit the metal chest plate which sent Wedge staggering back. And what's that? He grunted, quickly taking his stance again. Zell grinned. Rump roast. The long wooden body of Selfie's nunchaku slammed against the back of Wedge's head. Stars burst in his eyes. Another blow, a focused strike, hit his back right over his kidney. Pain exploded in his abdomen and he fell to his knees. His saber slipped from his hands as he struggled to remain upright. He wanted to cry out in pain but suddenly didn't have the voice for it. How come no one can work out what that means? Selfie grinned. Zell shrugged. Always seemed pretty obvious to me. Maybe it's the heat of battle. Could be, she nodded before looking down at Wedge. Sorry about that. Nothing personal, Kay. Major. Wedge cried out, his voice pained. We can't win this one. Stop your whining. Biggs hollered over the sound of his own machine gun. Squall hadn't moved from behind his ice shield. He was waiting quite patiently. The sudden empty clicking of Biggs's weapon announced to them all that he had run out of bullets. The Major knew exactly what that sound meant. Somehow though, he still looked surprised as he clicked it a few more times for good measure. Hey, Squall said interestedly as he melted his ice shield. You know, our current information says that the standard issue submachine guns for senior officers in the Galbadian army only have enough ammunition for 43 seconds of continuous fire. You easily doubled that time. Shut up, whelp. Biggs yelled at him, shaking his gun as though that might dislodge a few more rounds into the chamber. Maybe it's not standard issue, Zell suggested, putting his arms behind his head, relaxing. I said, shut up. That's a good point, Squall nodded, pushing hair from his eyes after a sudden change in wind blew it into his face. Major, is that gun standard issue? Have you upgraded your weapon personally or is that an army-wide change? Don't mock me. He yelled grabbing for his emergency dagger. I I can still fight you. Major. Wedge spoke up, trying to stand I think maybe. The wind battered at them harder. Selfie squealed and grabbed for her skirt. Squall's eyes narrowed as he looked up for clouds. Was a storm coming? A gust of stronger wind slammed into them and Squall's foot kicked back to anchor himself into the ground. Whoa! Zell yelled, dropping to grab the grating under his feet. Don't anyone look up my skirt! Selfie yelled angrily, ducking down as well. What they? Biggs didn't follow their example and drop. He turned trying to fight against the powerful wind with his own body weight. Major! Wedge yelled, trying to hold onto the floor as the cadets were doing. He was still weak from the kidney shot though and his grip didn't last. Cypher, still standing apart and watching the fight, cried out as the wind threw him back. His head hit against a metal beam and he fell down behind an circuit box, dizzy and reeling. Squall made himself small against the force of the wind as it got strong enough lift Biggs and Wedge bodily from the metal grating and throw them backwards. Squall didn't see where they landed but it was hardly his biggest problem at the moment. Waves of wind battered against them as a large shadow descended from above. The enormous winged creature looked like a cross between a duck, a wasp, and a bat. Its leathery wings continued to push around air even as it stopped releasing a tornado from its strange beak. It had long, spindly hands and attached to them were very thick, very sharp black claws. What the hell is that? Zell cried out as he stood back up again. 
with the wind from its beak ceasing, they could stand once more. It doesn't matter. Squall yelled, lifting his blade back up as he took to his feet again. Kill it quickly. And watch out for its breath. Zell. Selfie pulled up her weapons. You prefer wings or breasts? I told you. I'm a breasts guy. Wait. Selfie giggled at the success of her word trap. We'll distract it, Squall told her, ignoring her game. You do what you need to. I'm gone. She announcing, turning, and running backwards and away from the fight. The winged monster lifted its head to watch her go. Squall could practically see the decision to chase after her crossing its face. No, you don't. Squall lifted the revolver and let off two quick shots. He aimed for the wings where the skin would be the thinnest. The monster roared in pain as two holes appeared in its left wing. As he battered them about, the holes started ripping further. That should keep it from flying away, Squall nodded, satisfied. How is that a good thing? Zell demanded to know angrily. Zell, take left. On it. Squall ran right, forcing the monster to choose between the two of them. It was massive, easily big enough to swallow them in one gulp. But there was seed training involved in fighting monsters much bigger than yourself. Squall figured the mechanics for fighting one of these things wouldn't be too different from fighting a T-Rex or maybe with the added difficulty of being a winged monster. And he had never fought a T-Rex or with only three people before. But he wasn't trying out for seed because he didn't enjoy a challenge. The monster went after Zell first. He swept his claws out in a wide arc, chasing after the fleeing cadet. Zell jumped up at the last minute and backflipped over the arm. He landed on the other side and kicked out. The blow landed against the monster's wrist like a pebble. Zell had to drop to his belly to avoid getting knocked away by the hand swinging back. This time, it was aiming towards Squall. He stood his ground, calm and staring as the arm came in closer. Just before it hit him, Squall brought the revolver up and down again. His finger slammed against the trigger of the sword, letting out an explosion of ice energy. It did little but increase the pain of having an arm severed. No way! Zell breathed. Squall remained standing exactly where he had been as the stump of an arm and the hand split apart and passed him. The air was charged with ice crystals that froze the monster's blood before it could come gushing out of his body. The beast reared back, screaming into the sky. Squall heard a sound like a massive vacuum sucking up a great deal of air. Realization him him almost too late. Get down! He yelled dropped to the floor to grab the metal grate. Zell followed suit, obeying the order because it was an order and not because he recognized what was about to happen. The monster threw down its head. Its beak seemed to detach from its face like a hing as it let out a long breath. A gust of wind, a tornado, came spiraling from its massive lungs. It washed over Zell and Squall's prone bodies. Squall grimaced as he felt it wearing on his flesh like fine sandpaper. The tornado only lasted a few seconds but it blew away everything that wasn't tied down on the platform. Its beak snapped back into place as it glared hatefully at them. Zell and Squall jumped up at the same moment. Ugh, Zell waved his hand before his face. That thing smells like it's been eating batum fish. Squall was inclined to agree. Might be its diet. Gross. Zell shook his head to clear it of that sickening odor. Hey, Squall. I'm going to try something. 
Think you can distract it for a moment? The monster was glaring at Squall. It was clearly intelligent enough to differentiate them and remember that Squall was the one that lopped of its hand. That won't be a problem, he said calmly. The monster roared before striking out with its remaining hand. Squall ducked under than appendage easily. It was harder for the beast to aim now that its weight had been so changed with the loss of one hand. It let out a hissing breath of irritation. Blizzard! Squall ordered Shiva, throwing up his hand. A spear of ice erupted from the ground, piercing the beast's thorax. Yeah, that sounded right. The ice spell did little more than irritate him. He pulled back his fist and slammed it forward. Squall brought up his blade and caught the hit against the sharp edge of his revolver. Squall was thrown backwards. A large laceration was opened against the beast's knuckles. Dark, tar-like blood came out of the wound as it reared back for another attack. Squall rolled out of the way and the fist whooshed by his head. Blizzard! He yelled again, pointing. Another spear of ice erupted from the ground. This time, his arm was low enough to catch it in the meat. The monster pulled back, his hand giving Squall time to jump to his feet. Zell, how much longer? He yelled, watching the monster carefully to see which way it was going to strike so he could dodge accordingly. A few more seconds. Zell's eyes were closed, one smoking fist before his face, the other holding onto the wrist. He wasn't focused on his limbs though. His thoughts were turned inward as he tried to grasp at the new connection with Ifrit. They didn't know each other. Zell had never called on Ifrit's power before. It was taking him much longer than it would take Squall to connect with his familiar Shiva. It was like trying to dance with an unknown partner. You just didn't know how the other moved and how to adjust yourself accordingly. A new experience had to be taken slowly. The beast slammed his fist down onto the platform, shaking the entire thing. Squall nearly lost his footing. Which was what the beast wanted. As Squall was correcting his stance, he sliced out. Squall threw his body back. The dark claw sliced across his shirt drawing tiny droplets of blood in the spots that dug beneath the top layer. Zell. Just a little longer. The beast swept backwards. Squall used the revolver to deflect the attack. The ping of its claws against the metal of his blade echoed down his arm. Thunder! Squall ordered Shiva, pointing to the center of the monster's body. A blast of electricity sparked out and, and the beast writhed in pain. Squall stepped back slightly as it growled angrily. It started taking in another breath. Zell. Okay. As the monster was drawing in for another attack, Zell's eyes opened. They flashed bright, fiery yellow as a large puff of broiling steam curled up from his nostrils. Zell could feel the energy build up in his fist. It was burning hot like the sun. The heat of it felt good on his skin. It raised to ash even the memory of the cold. The air around him swirled with heat waves. Ifrit reached out and touched his comrades with his power. Protecting them so that only the target he intended would get hurt. Shiva screamed in indignation at the layer of heat settling over Squall's skin. Immediately, she brought up her own barrier of cold under that heat to keep it off of him. The monster, his attention caught by the sudden flare of heat from his side, turned away from Squall. That gave Squall time to close his eyes and focus on calling Shiva. His hand came up as his eyes closed, reaching into his mind to call her out. Across the platform, 
Zell grinned as he saw Ifrit burst into life in front of his eyes. The fire beast rose out of a ring of fire that burst into life in front of Zell. He roared his power to the sky as he rose up carrying with him a ball of flame and burning stone that he had summoned with himself. The flying monster started backtracking, seeing the stone and flames rising up. It let out its tornado breath in an attempt to blow out the fire. It crashed against the fire only serving to oxygenate the flames and make them burn that much hotter. Zell grinned as he felt the living heat of the flames. It burned within and around him. The heat sank into his muscles and he welcomed it with a large smile. The Molten Inferno of the Beast of Flames Hellfire Zell brought down his fist, bringing the flaming rock ball with him like an asteroid. The wind monster tried to fly away but the molten projectile was aimed directly at him. The tower rocked when the lava rock smashed into the monster. It cried out, all its stored breath coming out in a rush as it was crushed into the ground. The scent of burning flesh floated through the air as if its flames burned out. The monster remained on its back, letting out a long sound as it tried to pick itself back up. Squall's shining blue eyes opened up again and he pointed the energy gathered in his palm. Diamond Dust Zell cried out from the blast of cold air against his flames but more from annoyance than pain. He wasn't in the path of the ice tunnel that encapsulated the monster. The shock of such heat to such cold deep in his bones sent it into spasms. Squall's fist closed and the ice shattered. The shards sliced along its skin. Zell grimaced as the beast continued to move. How does he stay alive? Selfie! Squall yelled out. Now! The tiny girl sprinted in from behind the monster. She jumped onto his forehead and propelled herself forward. She twisted in mid-air, swinging out her nunchaku as she did so. Water! She yelled, calling out her magic. Her feet landed on the dead center of the monster's chest. She lifted her nunchaku up and let the power of the water magic flow down into the creature. Some evaporated from the fire. Some froze with the ice. Most of it clogged in the beast's lungs. The sudden feeling of drowning made it twist and flail trying to dislodge the feeling. Her task done, Selfie turned and ran down his body. She crested over the thorax and slid down into a clumsy pile at Squall's feet. The monster, weakening was thrashing itself towards the edge. Hey, do you hear that? Selfie asked, turning back. I don't hear anything, Squall frowned, stepped back but raising his weapon. It's coming from the monster. Selfie! Squall yelled out for her. She didn't heed him. She ran back towards the monster. Drawing back her arm, she whipped one end of her nunchaku back. Then she drove it forward. The puncture wound was as large as her wrist but a mere pinprick to the downed monster. Come on! She yelled, hitting a button on the side of the weapon. Selfie! Get back! Squall yelled at her. Just another second. It's falling. Zell warned, pointing to the edge. The monster, choking and sputtering, hit the edge, the end of its balance. Selfie felt her weapon jerk her forward. She jerked back quickly, yanking it away. The monster suspended there for a second, grasping at its chest with its own arm. Then, Excruciatingly slowly, it tipped over fell with a whisper down towards the rocks at the base of the cliff. There was a long moment of silence. Woo! Zell yelled out, jumping in the air.
Did you see that? That was awesome. Selfie agreed loudly. The two high-fived once, twice, three times in their excitement as they celebrated the victory. Squall stepped back from the edge and celebrating teammates. He moved around the large circuitry panel and saw Major Biggs's body crumbled there. He was still breathing but otherwise unmoving. It was as much as Squall figured he owed him. He turned his head and walked to where Cypher had fallen. Already his captain was sitting up, shaking his head and trying to throw off the last blackness of unconsciousness. What happened? He asked, frowning. The tower shook when it turned on and you hit your head, Squall lied effortlessly. He would really rather not tell Cypher about the epic monster he had missed killing. You all right? Uh, yeah. Cypher shook his head again and his eyes focused on the mess left of the platform. What happened here? We fought the Major and Lieutenant. It got kind of crazy for a second. Cypher laughed derisively. All this for two weeks soldiers? Is that what those two are celebrating about? What idiots! Squall said nothing as he looked back to where Zell and Selfie were feeding each other's excitement by reenacting their favorite moments from the battle. Selfie looked over to them and her eyes caught on Cypher. Squad B Captain! Her previous task came back to her and she hurriedly ran over to him, jumping over Biggs's prone body. Excuse me. I have new orders for you. New orders? Cypher's eyebrow went up. Selfie nodded and her back went straight. Her voice took on a slightly robotic as she repeated her message like she were reading it from an official notice. All seed members and seed candidates are to withdraw at 1900 hours. Assemble at the shore. A look came over Cypher's face like she had just given him the highest insult imaginable. Withdraw. Are you kidding me? There are still enemies around. Selfie shrugged helplessly. I know, but I'm just a messenger. Squall shrugged as well. He didn't care about this battle. He had no personal investments in it. An order to withdraw takes priority. I don't want to miss the vessel. He turned to walk back to the elevator but Cypher frowned as he thought over the message. What time do you say? Like I said, Selfie growled in irritation before her back went straight and her voice robotic once more. All seed members and seed candidates are to withdraw at 1900 hours. Assemble at the shore. 1900 hundred hours. Cypher repeated as Squall turned back to him. We only have 30 minutes. He looked around and made a face as he took some steps back to the elevator. You all got 30 minutes to get down to the shore. What? Zell ran forward as Cypher was hitting the down button. Better run, he grinned leaving his squad behind without a thought. Hey! Selfie peered down into the hole left by the elevator. Wait for us! It was too late, he was already gone and the platform was too far away for them to jump. Who the hell does he think he is? Zell snarled, his fist shaking. Honestly, Squall wished he could be surprised by the behavior. It was so like Cypher. So he shrugged without interest. Why don't you ask him? Zell gave him a look. Our captain just abandoned us here. Can you have some emotion about that? It's already done. We don't have a choice but to wait for the elevator to come back up. We'll just have to run after that. Yeah, but... Zell sighed. 
Selfie crossed her arms unhappily. You know, Squad A's captain is really nice. I liked him a lot yours is kind of. Yeah, we know, Zell shook his head. Why do you think we're out here and not at our post? Selfie shrugged. Didn't really think of it, honestly. Except to be annoyed that you weren't where you were supposed to be. Thanks for that, by the way. It's not our fault. Zell protested immediately. Enough, Squall's quiet voice cut them off. She got the message to us in good order, that is all that's important. We have more than enough time to get down to the beach. Hey, that means the exam is over, right? Selfie beamed excitedly. Not until we are dismissed by our instructor, Squall shook his head. Try to maintain your professionalism until then. This elevator takes forever, Zell grumbled unhappily. I'm getting Cypher back for this, I swear. And if we miss the vessel, I'm taking him down. It seemed to take an eternity for the elevator to return to them. At least it did to Zell. The three of them stepped onto it and Zell hit the down button. He accidentally used so much power that the button broke and got stuck under his fist. Oops, he frowned as they started down. The sound of selfies laughing echoed up the shaft. As they disappeared down under, Major Biggses opened his eyes and turned his body back over. Groaning, he reached into the circuit box and pulled out the remote the wind monster had blown back into the box. Those little twerps are the targets, he instructed as he punched in the kill command into the controller. Now go. Go and destroy them. He lifted his hand, pointing and regretted it immediately. He didn't have the energy to do so and he slammed back down onto the floor again. He was too tired to even try to get up this time. At least he had gotten his revenge on the seed candidate brats. Down below, Zell was looking over Selfie's nunchaku with a critical eye as they stepped from the elevator. So, it's got to be based on the technology used in Galbadian armor, right? That's right, Selfie nodded eagerly. But I thought it was impossible to get the device that small. Well, it kind of is, Selfie nodded. She reached out and took her weapons back. That's why it's a one-off kind of thing. I can't use my magic twice. If I wanted to, I'd need a GF. But this baby has enough juice to allow me to cast a single spell without one. Impressive, Squall nodded, pleased with her weapon. Giggling, Selfie hit the release button on her weapon. A single Odin capsule escaped from a small compartment at the base and fell into her hand. So. Zell grinned at her. Open it. I want to see what you got. Giggling excitedly, Selfie pressed the release button. The wash of blue and pink energy sank down into her fist. The GF she had rescued from the mind of the beast flowed up her arm and seeped deep into her brain. It came to rest just behind her right ear. Selfie grinned at the sensation. She says her name is Siren. Siren, Squall nodded as though greeting her. She's happy. Selfie beamed, stowing her weapons away. She says she's been in that monster for ages. He made her sing for him all the time. Humans were not the only ones capable of junctioning GF. Some of the monsters that possessed higher intelligence could also accomplish the feat. Humans were the only ones who knew how to channel a GF's power and use it to enable magic in an otherwise magic-disabled creature. However, the GF could still be forced to inhabit the mind of a smarter monster. Oh, this is so exciting! Selfie beamed. And I almost missed her. 
I'm so happy I just emptied that capsule of its water spell. I wouldn't have been able to draw her out otherwise. Odin technology is the best, Zell agreed emphatically. That's the only bad thing about my fists. I can't have all the fancy bells and whistles you guys can have. Sure you can, Selfie assured him, opening the door of the tower. You're just not being creative enough with... Wait. Squall held up his hand, cutting her off mid-sentence. What's wrong? She asked, halting in the doorway. She looked around, expecting an enemy. Not that a G Army soldier would be any sort of challenge at this point. Squall turned his head too, but he wasn't looking. He was listening. It took a second but he heard it again. A high-pitched, metallic screech. With his companions being quiet, he could place its origin. Squall's eyes cast towards the sky. He didn't see anything immediately wrong. Then one of the shadows on the upper platform moved. The metallic screech rang out again. What's that? Zell frowned. I think we should move, Squall urged, pushing Selfie forward. Right. She started jogging. We're not climbing the cliff, Squall said, heading her off early. He knew that was exactly what she planned to do when she changed direction. The three of them ran across the small open clearing towards the path. They didn't get far. The metallic screech whined again. Squall looked back as he ran. Incoming! He yelled out the warning just as the large shadow leapt from the top of the platform. Zell and Selfie slid to a halt and turned just a step behind Squall. All three of them watched as the metallic behemoth came barreling down. A rain of dirt and rocks showered over them as it crashed into the ground with a deafening blow. A loud hissing alerted them of hydraulics releasing. The dust started to settle and Squall got a glimpse of a metallic creature. Shaped like a spider with the grill of a semi-truck, a red light flashed through the dust like a single-eyed monster. Um. Zell took a step backwards, trying squint at what he wasn't sure he was seeing. Uh-oh, Selfie stepped back, frowning. Siren says she recognizes it. She says the monster spotted it when it was flying around above the tower. What is it? Squall asked, grabbing for his blade. She doesn't know its name. Selfie swung her own weapon forward. The dust continued settling around them, revealing more of the mechanical menace. But she says the G-Army guys brought it up here as a last defense. It's a kill bot. Man, Zell groaned. How come the G-Army never makes anything nice? Forget it. Just take it down. Squall ordered. We still need to make it to the beach. We're running out of time. The whirring of machinery, the slam of spiked feet into the ground. The spider bot stepped forward out of the fog of dirt it had made and scanned them. So, Zell, Selfie laughed nervously. You more of a grill man, or a tailpipe man? Frickin' hell, he grumbled. Selfie tucked her weapon back and made to run around. The spider moved before Squall or Zell had a chance to take its attention. It lifted one leg. Hydraulics hissed and spit as it shot forward. Selfie squealed as the spiked foot shattered the cobblestone just in front of her. She slid to a halt, falling to her knees. Her body nearly caressing the leg. Squall reached out and grabbed her by the upper arm. He yanked back, pulling her out of the way of the rocks that the machine sent flying when its leg pulled back up. It's not going to fall for that, he told them. 
Thunder spells, water spells. Throw your magic at it. Zell, see if you can break through the grill and take out its sensors. Why do I have to? Do you have thunder or water spells? Frickin' hell! Zell roared wordlessly as he charged directly at the mech. Blizzard! Squall yelled, throwing up a spear of ice into the path of the leg that was about to spear Zell's body. What he wouldn't give for Quistus and Quetzalcoatl right now. Water! Selfie joined in, throwing a blast of bubbles over the machinery. Um, Squall. I don't think it's working. They probably waterproofed it. Of course they would if they were going to take it outdoors. Don't suppose you have thunder spells? Just water, cure, and ice. Well, and some is Huna, but my doctor told me only to use it when the jitters get to be too bad. Try summoning Siren, he suggested. See if she can do anything. Thunder. A bolt of electricity shot from Squall's hand and slammed into the bot. The jolt of energy shorted its systems for a moment. It jerked in place, stunned by the bolt. It was a brief second. The army would have built in redundancies for the possibility of thunder attacks. So it recovered quickly. But that moment was all the time Zell needed to get in close. He jumped up and threw himself across the hot metal of the engine hood. Ifrit! Some help here, buddy! He asked, jerked back from the metal. Immediately, the heat of it no longer bothered him. It felt kind of good. The air around him was what now felt too cold. He rather preferred it this way. All right, he grinned, cracking his knuckles. Let's see what we can break. Zell started pounding down on the mech's chassis. The metal of his gunlets sparked against the metal of the hood, but he was making dents. Across the space, Selfie had closed her eyes and brought up her nunchaku. That was where she gathered energy for GF summoning. She reached deep into her mind, trying to take hold of Siren. She was so brand new, not even in her head for a few minutes. It was like trying to talk to someone that only sort of understood your language. Thunder! Squall threw out his magic again. The spike leg aiming towards Selfie stopped and glitched from the magic. Squall struck out with his revolver and knocked it aside. When the machine's systems kicked back into gear, the foot slammed into the ground away from her. Ugh, Squall! Zell grabbed the edge of the hood as the mech thrashed about underneath him in order to pull its leg back. I can't break through this hood. I feel like I'm trying to crack a coupon nut with my bare hands. Squall's eyes ran quickly over the mech, eyes straining for any sign of a structural weakness. The pinchers on the front clacked together ominously as it regarded Squall similarly. Squall's eyes traced a line along the hood. A seam that could be opened so that its operators could access the engine. It was sealed shut, but with the right leverage. The mech jumped. Squall threw himself to the side. Selfie! He cried out for her, coming back up on his feet quickly. She was standing almost in the embrace of the machine. It was scanning her backing up slightly so it could grab at her properly. The sharp edges of its pincers gleamed in the sunlight. Selfie! Get back! Forget the summoning and get back! She paid him no mind. The pincers snapped back. Thunder! Squall shot out his spell, catching the mech in the side. The pincers glitched there. It would only give her a few seconds. Zell, grab Selfie. Zell rolled off of the mech, 
kicking out with his foot as he did so to push it back. He scooped up Selfie in his arms and jumped out of the way. The pincers slammed shut in the air where she had just been standing. Selfie, still lost in herself, trying to focus, paid no mind to Zell as he pulled her back. He set her down on her feet and took up a spot in front of her. Squall. I'm going in. Keep that thing off of Selfie. Squall didn't look to make sure Zell followed the order. Thunder. He threw out another spell. The monster glitched. Squall ducked down low and ran in under its pincers. It didn't hesitate long this time. Squall barely had time to use its pincer to vault himself onto the top before it was shaking back to life. The bot scanned around and couldn't spot Squall. It saw Zell and Selfie though. It slammed its feet into the ground and started charging. On its hood, Squall looked over the dense Zell had left, trying to find the seam he had seen while standing in front of the beast. Zell pulled back his fist and flames swirled around his gauntlet. Fire! His roar was accompanied by a blast of magic that smashed into the mech's outer hull. It did nothing but heat up the metal. Squall's hand ran along the hood, his fingers searching for the seam. His fingernail caught on it and he hefted up his sword with the other hand. Apologizing to his blade, he slammed the point down into the crease. The ear-splitting screech of metal slicing against metal hit them like a brick. But Squall was in. Putting his foot down against the joint of the front leg, he pulled up against the seam. The metal screamed in protest as he peeled up a section of the hood. Ready! Selfie yelled. Do it now! Squall ordered. He yanked his revolver from the hole he had just made and fell back against the hood. He felt cool as though he had just jumped into a pool of cold water. He lifted his eyes towards Selfie who was gesturing with her nunchaku. Her eyes beamed gold for just a second as she called on Siren's power. Seemingly from nowhere, a wave of water rushed forward and slammed into the bot. It flinched as water filled its circuits. Squall grinned as sparks started shooting across its body. A strange sound filled his ears and Squall frowned. It sounded like someone singing through a wall. Or through water. Distorted and hard to make out. No. Selfie cried plaintively. Siren's main attack is to strip someone of their ability to cast magic. She can't help us. She already did, Squall assured her. Using the pincers as a jumping point, Squall ran off of the back of the mech and leapt forward to join his teammates. He rolled and came up to grin at the mech. It was starting to short with its machine parts clogged with water. Water conducted electricity. Shiva! Squall lifted his blade and aimed it at the beast. Give me thunder on my gun. He felt the click in his mind as she obeyed. The revolver aimed and Squall could feel the charge of electricity in the bullets. It would last longer, pack more of a punch, than a straight spell. He let loose six quick shots. Three hit the hole in the hull. One slammed into the sensors. The last two hit its leg and body. Each bullet buried itself in the metal and let out a prolonged charge. The water in the system put there by Selfie and Siren carried the electricity. The machine bucked and thrashed uncontrollably as it fell face first into the gravel it had created stomping all around. Guys, the time. Selfie reminded them. Let's get the hell out of here. Zell pointed to the path. Squall nodded and sheathed his blade. They needed to get to the beach. That was far more important than watching the mech die. 
they jogged down the path. Squall could see the beach from here and frowned because there were already groups of seeds and cadets, tiny dots from this distance, climbing into the cabins of their vessels. The cracking of cobblestones, the hissing of hydraulics, the whir of machines stopped Squall dead in his tracks. He and the others looked back to see the spider bot stepping after them. Its sensors flashed across its face. No way! Selfie cried. But we busted that thing up. Zell shook his head. Forget it. Go. Squall grabbed them both as he ran past. He threw them both ahead of him and away from the machine. He could hear it walking. Not towards them. Away. They rounded up the path and climbed up onto the overlook. Incoming! Selfie yelled. The machine leapt from the bottom of the cliff. It soared through the air and came down on top of them. Squall had to throw himself to the side to avoid being speared with a leg. It was at an odd angle now though and couldn't grab them as they ran under and past it. Whoa! Selfie wobbled as she ran down the stairs. The machine above them throwing itself against the rocks to escape the spot it had jumped into was shaking the mountain. Go slow! Squall ordered. Though their instincts were screaming at them to run, they forced themselves to start down the steps more calmly. The shaking as it dug itself out at least told them it wasn't immediately on their tails. It still made taking the steps one at a time hard. The rocks behind them shattered as they were reaching the bottom. Okay, run. Squall ordered them. Selfie took the last six steps at a full jump. Zell and Squall jumped about half that. The three of them together sprinted towards the bridge back to town. Squall could hear the mech charging behind them. The snapping of hydraulics told him it had jumped before he saw its shadow in the sky. It landed on the other side of the bridge. Its face turned to them and it charged again. Back! Squall ordered turning on the next step and running back. Zell and Selfie remained with him though he could practically hear them wondering how going backwards would help. They outpaced the mech again and Squall heard the now familiar sound of it jumping. Turn! He ordered even as it was in the air. They obeyed without question and the three of them ran back towards town again. How did you know it would do that? Selfie asked, amazed. I didn't. Just run. They sprinted down the streets and Zell chanced to look. Some part of him had rather hoped that it wouldn't still be coming after them. It was too wide for the streets. So it simply turned and half walked on the wall, half on the streets. Squall, that thing is still coming, he yelled, turning back. The central square is up ahead. We're almost there. Squall's voice was calm still, but his face was drawn and determined. Hey, is that a dog? Selfie asked, pointing. Hein! Zell cried out. Squall, that dog is back again. Squall cursed in his head. You two, keep going. They were too well trained to question an order in these circumstances. They took the short route around the fountain to escape the mech. Squall had to run around it entirely to get to the dog that was hunched down against the ground. Come on! Squall grabbed the scruff of its neck and pulled. He expected the dog to hunker down further but it did not. Happy to follow a human, it jumped up and sprinted along with Squall. Go home! He ordered it next. The dog barked and took a thin alley that Squall couldn't hope to fit through. Sighing, 
wondering what that dog was even doing here, Squall continued up the street. Zell and Selfie were far ahead of him now. The monster was right on his tail. As he was passing the pub, he heard the monster get stuck on the second-story path. He turned and saw it trying to claw its way through. As he did so, the pub doors opened and cadets rushed out. The leader's eyes were huge with fear looking at the mech. Squad C, withdraw! He yelled. Roger! His men agreed eagerly, running away with him. Squall backed up slowly, his eyes on the mech. It stopped fighting against the pathway and started backing up a few steps instead. Squall cursed as he heard the familiar hiss of hydraulics as it prepared to jump. He turned and started sprinting down the road. He heard the monster mech land with the crunch of rocks. Then its feet hissed as it chased after him. This part of Main Street opened up wider and the mech didn't have to side crawl against the wall. It was faster now. Squall sprinted past a car that he heard the spider trample under its feet. He turned with the curve of the road and saw Selfie and Zell hanging back behind Squad C waiting for him. Go! He roared, throwing out his hand. The two of them looked unwilling to leave him behind, but they were seed cadets. They were taught to always follow their orders. The spider skidded through the turn, slamming into a house. Squall's muscles were screaming in protest at the prolonged sprint. Shiva let loose a cure spell to take the pain so he could keep running. He would feel it later, worse now, but he would at least be alive to feel it. Selfie jumped clear over the stairs leading down to the beach. Zell slid down the bumpers on the side of the steps. Both of them looked back as they ran across the sand. Squall felt rocks his hit back as the machine slammed through the arch over the exit. He jumped forward as Selfie did. Grateful for the sand to soften his landing, his rolled his body over. He heard the mech pause then, scanning for the target it had lost. Their vessel was the only one left. Zell sprinted towards it, not stopping until he was safely inside, panting and holding his aching sides. Selfie turned just at the entrance, her face worried as she looked between Squall and the mech. Feeling sand now in some uncomfortable places, Squall pushed himself to his feet and sprinted after the others. Selfie ran inside the boat ahead of him as the engine roared to life. It started pulling off as Squall was drawing even with it. The sand was weighing him down. It was so much more difficult to run in sand. The monster's spiked feet had no such disadvantage. It was gaining on him. Squall! Come on! Zell urged him forward. Squall! Jump! Selfie reached out for him. His feet hit the water and he did just that. He could feel the heat of the exhaust of the mech right on his back. He wasn't going to make it. The beeping of the targeting system on the turret gun rang out a mere split second before the gun started, rapidly spitting out a hail of bullets on the monster. They were of a higher caliber than Squall's revolver. They were coming much faster. The machine jerked back as they penetrated its armor. Squall let out a grunt of pain as his abdomen slammed into the edge of the landing gear. He was already pulling himself up before Selfie or Zell could reach down to help. He rolled and came up, panting hard. The doors were already closing but not fast enough for Squall to miss the fiery explosion as the red-hot bullets penetrated the fuel cell of the mech. He heard pieces of it slam into the hull of the vessel even as the speeder was pulling away. His heart racing, breathing hard, Squall dropped back onto his butt. Selfie was already on the ground, on her knees as Cell leaned against the wall. Squall! 
the door to the cabin slid open and a breathless Quistus looked out on them. Oh, Zell. Selfie? Oh, are you all alright? Was that you on the gun, instructor? Zell asked, grinning through his panting. Quistus let out a sigh of relief and smiled at them. They were all safe. Where's Cypher? Squall asked, turning to push himself up on his feet. His legs protested after that prolonged workout but he ignored them. Quistus jerked her thumb back. He's in there. We might be a bit cramped with one more, but welcome aboard Selfie. Sorry Squad A left without you. She harumphed and crossed her arms. And I thought he was an okay guy. Zell laughed at her as the thrill of the realization that they were still alive set in. Somehow, Squall wasn't surprised to see Cypher's cult slash friends already waiting at the docks when the water speeder pulled into a halt back at Valum. Cypher! Rajan waved at him eagerly. So? How did it go? Cypher, walking ahead of the others, gave a long-suffering sigh. Man, all they did was get in my way. Being a leader ain't easy. Safe? Fujin asked, her eyes worried. He gave her a look like it was a stupid question. She nodded once, satisfied with that. The two of them turned and followed Cypher towards the car. Is he serious? Zell asked, looking after him. Footsteps from the speeder told them that Quistus was coming out. Good job everyone, she beamed brightly before looking around. Where's Cypher? Squall looked over his shoulder in time to hear the car they had come in starting up. He was already seated inside, probably being worshipped by his fans. Quistus shook her head. Just be back at garden by sundown. You're all free till then. You may consider your exam over. Okay, dismissed. She turned to walk back inside the speeder as the three of them started to return to the car. I'm telling you, I can't wait to get home and get some food, Zell said, rubbing his stomach. That was one hell of a day. I don't think I've ever fought that much in my life. Seriously, Selfie agreed, sighing. Really? Squall felt it was more like one of his more prolonged training sessions with Cypher. Yes, exhausting, but he still had enough energy to move. As they were walking towards the car, it was pulling out. Squall knew better than to think that Cypher was having the car pulled out for them to have easier access. It started pulling away up the street. H hey! Zell started running after it, but it was already gone. Not again, man. There goes Mr. Ego. Squall shrugged. Might as well walk it. Easy for you to say. Zell slumped over. I'm exhausted, I feel like I'm going to collapse. Selfie giggled. Do you guys always have this much fun? Fun? He repeated, looking at her. Police. Let's go, Squall gestured them forward. The sooner we leave the sooner we get back. We don't want to miss the exam results. Zell groaned but fell into step beside Squall. Man, I wish I had enough money to just rent a car. I hate being broke. And I'm still hungry. Selfie was laughing at him as they continued walking through town. We can eat at Garden, Squall told him calmly. Zell made a face. I'm not really looking forward to nutrition bars after a fight like that. Hey. I know. Let's stop by my place. 
Hey. Selfie blinked. Yeah. My mom is the best cook in the world. Come on. Laughing, Zell started running up the street. Selfie looked at Squall. Should we? Squall shrugged. It would be better than garden food. Why not? End of chapter.